All right, we're live. Hello, everyone. Here is uh, Level Up. Uh, that's the session 80 with uh, Jamayura Baev. Uh, we are uh, honored to have him uh, once again after actually three years. Uh, yeah, it's been three years, isn't it? Yeah, I just checked. Holy shit, wow. two years. God damn it. Oh, it's three years, actually. Three I, years, checked, yeah. I checked it. It was uh, 24th August, three oh years ago. God. So it's like, whoa. Wow. That's Time crazy. flies. Getting old. Time yeah. flies. And Time yeah, a lot of things. Quickly, yeah. yeah, and a lot of things actually changed. And finally, we are all here together. So uh, it's Ooh, me, yeah, cool. uh, Jonas, uh, Wojtek, and Jama. Hey, guys. Um, so it's Hello. really awesome that we finally managed to, you know, gather the group together and do the session. So, um, yeah, um, I think we can uh, we can just quickly go through the background of JAMA. He, he's going to introduce himself very quickly. And then we're going to be amazed by a lot of VR stuff that he's going to share. So uh, the voice is yours right now. The screen is on your uh, JAMA. Yeah. Hello. And awesome. yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, so yeah, my name is Jama Jurabayev. Ignore Derek; he always misspelling my surname. <laughs> <laughs> That's his specialty. That's why yeah, I love his there intro. There are probably only a few people who actually spell my name. But you know, can I use this opportunity to actually clarify? I'm not Yama. You know, like so many people, they keep calling me Yama, and I just Yama. keep swallowing that. I was like, okay, that's a cultural <laughs> difference. I'm Jama, right? So, and yeah, my surname is Jurabayev as well. Uh, it's not a big thing, but it's usually like one of those things that you really don't know how to pronounce. So uh, I live and work in London uh, at Industrial Light and Magic as a senior concert artist. But originally I'm from Tajikistan, which is... Uh, far away. Yeah, you know earth, elephants and rhinos? <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the, underneath it. Well, it's a Central Asian, Asian country, ex-Soviet Republic, and yeah, it's a really nice, beautiful country. It's a little country, but it's very nice, beautiful, and charming. So actually, like uh, concept art and like art-related stuff, I actually started doing probably in my mid-20s, I would say. I was like 26 or 27 when I first started painting and doing something. Before that, I used to study aerospace engineering for six and a half years. Normally it's four years, but because I was a bad student, I had to study six and a half. So yeah, but I barely like finished all that stuff because it was so math and physics heavy. <clears throat> and That's a completely different thing, right? Yeah. Uh, it's completely it's, different it was, than artistic. Yeah. It was quite a crazy period of time because I, I thought it would be something more related to... Actually, first I tried the computer engineering for a year and a half and I just said, no, no, no way I will do that stuff. You know, like searching for like something in your code was definitely not something I wanted to do. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should go and try something more inspiring. And I switched to aerospace engineering. But it, that turned out to be even even worse because it was so <laughs> like crazy math heavy, you know, like it, all those formulas and stuff like that. So after I graduated, I couldn't find a proper job. I wanted to do some military-related stuff, but because I was a foreign citizen, I couldn't stay where I was studying. And then it was a Turkey, in Turkey. So I had to come mm -hmm. back and kind of restart and actually like look at the stars and think, oh my God, that's the game is over, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm telling this story because I think uh, there's a lot of people like me out there who kind of have similar backgrounds because you know, especially when in, in your mid twenties, you kind of like your character is establishing as a person, mm -hmm. and you have so much pressure. Like, it's not like negative pressure, but you do have a pressure, like from your parents, from people you know. Like, people expect you to be something, you know, towards yeah. Your parents, at least right? start clarifying, right? Yeah, what people you want to do. Yeah. People like ask you, "Oh man, what are you doing?" And you kind of want to say, "I'm doing this," but then you realize you just finished uni and you're not doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just played StarCraft, played Half Life. <laughs> it was a fun time, man. Oh, Zero gosh. money, but no purpose in life. But it was a pretty good time. But then I kind of like I said, "Okay, man, enough is enough." And I locked myself in the room, and for two years I kind of like started learning about art. I didn't consider doing concept art because that always felt like it's very difficult, you know? I started as a graphic designer, doing like simple things like business cards, websites and stuff like that, but all, I always adored what concept people and illustrators do. So I kind of built my first vacuum and after two strokes that I put on the canvas, I said, okay, it's not about the vacuum, it's about like the deep knowledge <laughs> that you need, you know? <laughs> 
And yeah. then that's actually it was the moment when my uh, engineering knowledge came became handy because engineering is all about really understanding the core of problems. You know, like you need you you can't just memorize formulas and solve problems. You need to really understand how everything works and kind of derive new formulas combining those small little uh, principles. And when I started doing art, that kind of felt to me that I need to use the same approach. So I started going heavy on composition, on like anatomy and all that stuff that I needed to do. And I think it's that was a very critical and important moment for me because that's what drives me these days as well. Mm -hmm. When new things come out, like I feel like I have all the necessary basic principles to kind of learn those new things like 3D. At some point, like, you know, the whole world, like, concept world started like slowly using more and more 3d and it was for me it was a very easy transition i used to do only 2d artwork but the principles because the principles are the same i kind of like was able to catch up very quickly yeah that's the very very important part of being a concept artist nowadays is how quickly you have to adjust to different pipelines like it sometimes take a year for a mm -hmm. software to actually go in fully and mm -hmm. uh, for new software to come in and suddenly be a standard during the production so it's yes. Actually, well, you true. know, actually, like we all know, there's a difference between illustration and concept art, but like there's a lot of versions of the same kind of difference. But to me, the main difference is the concept art is more about problem solving, it's not really about image making, though it kind of sounds weird because you create these images. But that's why you see a lot of like not beautiful concept art out there because the purpose of that concept art is to solve some kind of problem, you know, yeah. how this door is opening, how like this car is looking it's not about like making beautiful amazing artwork it, even though i think if you can do both you will basically get more become more valuable in terms of how people pay you and uh, problem solving is exactly what i was doing when i was an engineer you know like they they, they would give you specific parameters of the this imaginary aircraft and they will tell you like come up with a real aircraft so you had to go back and kind of really analyze things and make it really work uh so that's why when i was doing like start started my restarted my career i was really trying to learn all that stuff and uh that's why i think like i have a really big arsenal of stuff i can do like if you go to on my art art um art station page you can see i do sketches i do 3d i do now these days i do vr i do the different hybrids of those because i think it's not really important what you use what you need to do is to solve this problem and whatever is relevant for that yeah. moment at that point of time you should go for it you know because there's so many different inputs like time frames uh, like level of detail they want from you variations so you can't just say like oh i'm gonna do thumbnails maybe you just go jump straight away in 3d mock something up and kind of show them how it's gonna look it's it's really really like i think what is really important when you get the brief you first you sit down and in five ten minutes you just try to analyze it it's like when you go and like enter an exam you know like exam you like first you look at the paper you read those questions and then you kind of start doing something and uh it it, it really helps to make something in the most efficient way uh there, like, if you, I, I don't want to spend your time, guys, looking at my work because this is something you can easy, easily do by going on my art station. But I worked on movies like King Kong, I worked on the Avengers, and a few upcoming titles that I'm super proud of. But unfortunately, I can't tell you what they are. <laughs> NBA. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some really, really nice things coming, and I was super, super happy to be part of those projects. And you know, working in ILM, they always like it's. A, like probably it's the best company vfx company out there and obviously they have like so influential so influential throughout the years so innovative right yeah Crazy. yeah exactly like they always welcoming when you say guys i need some time to do my r d like uh, hopefully like in a year and two i can show those projects there's so many points when like i felt like i can't do it the way i used to do because it's not that efficient, you know, and it was a new challenge. I, I had to go out there, like do my R&D for a couple of days and come up actually with something that was way more efficient in terms of I would interact with director and the art director and stuff like that. So, I, you know, like in many, many times, like people who worked with me, they would ask me like, man, how, how do you do this old stuff? Like, when do you find time? <laughs> well, first thing I do work a lot, but also I try to 
do this this research when I, when I actually work, you know, like, and I and I realize not many people actually do that because I, I understand it's not like I'm judging people, but people, we we like to play safe, right? Oh no, I think we lost John. No, I can hear him. No, that's yes, okay. Yeah, he's here. he's there. <laughs> I can hear him. Oh, <laughs> Wojtek, that was an uprising. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, fine. So I was saying that like not actually many people have a time or courage to like do those studies when they work because I understand like there's a lot of pressure and you need to kind of be sure that you can deliver on time. Mm. But I truly believe like if you know that there is some way to do something and it will be faster and more efficient, you I would go for that risk. I did it so many times when I I didn't know exactly how to do it, but I had this feeling like if I combine this and I put this there, it's going to come together, right? Yeah. And and because you do, like, in theory, you know it's going to work. All you need to do is just to prove it. it that's, I think, what how engineering works, and it, it really, really helps me throughout my so, career. So you weren't actually afraid of, you know, exploring stuff during the production pipeline? And Absolutely. It's going to help you later. So I think it's somehow, like, because you started a little bit later than most of the people that that watching us, mm -hmm. uh, I mean the art, and uh, you got more mature of you know uh, picking up the the options after you, as you said, like you studied the engineering and it really helped you be more effective yep. and efficient. Actually, efficient is the yep. word. If it... Yeah, be, I would say also um, efficient, but also a bit more realistic. You know, like uh, because. There's a lot of tools out there and like methods. Yeah, time-wise, right? They are very technical, you know. Like I start using when I started using 3D, I was like, what? <laughs> you know? Like and actually there's a, a little bit of uh background for the I actually started using 3D maybe in 99 or 98 when I was doing my uni un, university stuff because we were like designing all those planes and stuff like yeah. that. But I always felt like, oh my god, it's so tedious. I mean, we were using like math related things like simulated 3D modeling, you know, when you can run the world, the fluid flow around the airplane. But still back then when I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. And mm -hmm. then when I kind of started using 3D for my uh, art career, I, I always felt like I do respect all those beautiful, like amazing, super complicated problems. Uh, programs except Modo maybe. maybe Modo is like a deep, <laughs> deep down there. I'm, I'm kidding. They're all good, but they do specific things. And I always felt like, man, I just want to do simple stuff. Like I want to pick something and I want to move it, scale it, rotate at the same time or stuff like that, you know? And actually I will be showing you like, this is something you really can do in VR. VR kind of opens and uh, makes that really nice bridge between 2D artwork, which is like, you just have your pen and your ideas and you draw and technical aspect of it when you can draw something and then it will eventually tra transition into a 3D object very, very quickly. Uh, so I can probably show you a few like things that I've done recently. As I said, you can go on my art station and you can look through the different things that I was doing. But specifically, like at some point, I also felt like there's so many things that you can't really achieve with just doing like a painting, like a like a flat canvas, right? Because let, let's say you have a you're working on a film. And they want you to design the set. You can design it in 3D, but that takes takes obviously a lot of time. But I, I was thinking, or you can do it in 2D, but then you obviously can't move your camera easily. Every painting you will do, you will kind of do it from scratch or use 3D base paint over it. And it always felt like I need to find something a bit more practical, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's where I I started like exploring the ways to do 360 paintings because 360 paintings and basically it's you doing that environment. And you can actually look around. And I realized like the process was very, still was very technical. You would like do this, uh, you will combine those photos together. Like if you go five years, like before now, like if you had to combine and stitch the panorama. It was like, oh my God, it's too, too long to do that stuff, you know? But then I actually like realized like Photoshop has this spherical panorama painting when you can actually like go inside the sphere and start like painting and it was like wow that's really really user friendly you know because you can just like paint as you do in normal 2d flat space but you're doing it in 360 and then i was using 3d code which was even more kind of uh friendly 
uh, I, I will show that's all that stuff, and then we, we will slowly go to fully VR world. So let me, for example, open this. I have this viewer that I'm using to run my all, all my, oops, what happened? Oh, okay, just a second. <clears throat> so basically, you were thinking always about time, how to, you know, save that and how to be more f efficient with what you are doing uh, and how to, yes, how I to, would, I would how to approach <laughs> different things, right? Yeah, I would say not time for the sake of time, as I told you, like, especially in ILM, they always give us time. But I was thinking I want to spend more time on important things like yeah. storytelling, design, rather than trying to figure like, out how something works, right? Figure how, how to subdivide my beveling to make it look like beveling, <laughs> yeah. you know, like all, we all know that stuff, you know, when you yeah. actually like spend half of your day doing all the technical stuff. Some people love it. I'm, I'm not in any way I'm saying it's a bad thing, but the stuff I do, I have to be a, more, a bit more efficient with my time so I can actually concentrate on storytelling and concentrate on uh, design, as I said. Mm -hmm. so, for example, this is like, a, like, I'll show you a couple of 360 paintings that I did. So this is like an interior of this hangar. And what, are, what is really appealing for me here is that just in one painting, you convey so much, you know, like you can have vehicles, you can have characters in characters interacting or doing something. You can have an actual environment. You can have like a few things like you obviously you can't move, but as a first impression, just to kind of uh, start this conversation about this environment, I think you can convey so much in 360 painting, you know, because it also gives you a very accurate uh, sense of scale and Unfortunately, like right now, you don't exactly see it as you would do in VR. When uh, when I put my headset on, <clears throat> like for example, I can rotate it using my mouse, but then I can also like switch this one. And now I can hold my VR set, you see, and I can rotate. And it's almost like I'm swinging my head and I'm looking at this environment. And when you see this environment, like in VR, it's so, so way more immersive, you know, because yeah. the scale is great. Like... Uh, the light is just so cool and it's just like wow you see and and i actually think because vr is kicking off and there's a lot of things uh that are coming uh, doing concept artwork in 360 especially for vr stuff will be very very useful because not only you will address all the design points but you also will actually show people exactly how it will look like in vr space you know mm -hmm. um let me show you another one yeah, it's also pretty cool to extract shots from those 360. So there is actually quite a lot. You can sometimes hold sequences that you can extract. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right but I love the fact that you can also play with the camera lens. Like you can do stuff like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. This is crazy stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. It can give you some so many different ideas, you know, of how you can like present this is some right? yeah, this is something you wouldn't be able to do if you had like a flat painting, you know, and or you can zoom in and like like if I want to look at this plane, I will zoom in and stuff like that. So, and it gives you like a next level of what you can actually get from this, you know. And like for example, over here, like also in terms of storytelling, you know, like for example, the the composition rule is the same, but then you you need to have some elements that will guide you to another frame. Like for example, in this painting, you I have these guys, but then. Both ways, for example, this way I have these mountains and you kind of want to see, oh, what's there? And you start looking up, right? Or you have this uh, searchlight, you kind of, oh, what are they looking at? And then you see this. So every frame kind of need, it needs to, ha to have some kind of point of interest, just exactly like a normal composition rule, but a bit different, a bit like more advanced mm -hmm. uh, version of it. Yeah, super cool. So let's say some of our viewers wants to learn, want to learn that. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, Jama is uh, doing his gamma tutorials. I tried them myself. They're really awesome. That's how I learned how to sort of start doing 360s, how to think about them. So just yeah. And by the by the way, Wojtek is not paid for this advertising. Yeah, question. I'm just doing it. Time, <laughs> like these are really awesome, and uh, you're a great teacher. So you know, oh, uh, go you grab those if you're interested in those techniques. So yeah, that's the best resource you can get yep. on those. I will show some of it, but of course it will not go very technical because there's a lot of like yeah. at least a couple of hours you need to see like and try tools. But I would say it's very, very straightforward. And it covers a lot of like different range of things you can do. You can do a fully painted uh, environment. Like let's, for example, let's open this guy. Or... 
uh, over here. So you are using this uh, method to show your uh, like location designs like on the daily basis at work or? Well, I would say not like every day I do this, but like remember that gut feeling that I was talking about? I do yeah. have a feeling that this will be like the designs of the sets, like the movie sets can benefit a lot from this approach. And I will show a couple of examples for games. For games, it's perfect, especially like for first person shooters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and just create almost the final looking environment, but it's gonna be just a flat painting. It's awesome in terms of time, it's super efficient. <laughs> so this is like more like a painterly thing, or you can do like a line drawing. I did this one, so we can look like. And once again, like it's so cool that you can concentrate on storytelling. Like this is the ordinary street, but then you look up and when you see this reveal of a spaceship, it kind of makes wow what this world is about, you know? And then you mm -hmm. can pick up different locations in this story and kind of do those 360s. And you can, like, you can give this the, your the user so much, like the viewer so much information just in a few paintings, you know? And if I was doing this as a 2D artwork, I had to do this frame, then I had to do this, that, and th which is also cool, but it's just a different instrument, a different, like a more advanced version of a storytelling. And like, for example, the way I usually do them, like I do line drawing and then, for example, this is one of the work in progress pieces that I'm working on. And you, you can see like, for example, if I zoom, like you, you can see over here, there's a line drawing and then I started underneath of that line drawing, I started actually doing like uh, a proper painting. Painting, yeah. Yeah, so it's like. And how much time it actually takes you to wrap well, up one of those well, it really it. depends. Like, if it's fully painted, it probably takes three, four, five days sometimes because there's a lot to paint, you know? Like, but there's yeah. a lot of shortcuts. Uh, like, you can use 3D base, you can use photo base, and obviously, you can, like, in 3D code, I will show you, you can use symmetry, you can use all those quick tricks that actually enables you to do some some stuff in more way efficient way, you know? Mm -hmm. And the way I usually do, I do the sketch and then I jump back to Oculus and look around because sometimes scale is off. Like, but this scene, I wish guys at some point, like whoever came to my workshops, they saw this painting and was like, wow, this is so crazy because like this guy is literally standing behind you. It's so creepy and so intimidating, you know? And like you, you read the story and like at some point, if I hope we can make like animated 360s, that will be like a very, very interesting twist on storytelling because, you know, you can look around and like find out all these interesting things. Uh, but uh, now I wanted to show you like uh, how you can do it in games. Like for example, because one of my students she did she did this one. It was based on HDRI she found on the internet, and then she painted it over and made it look like alien. And when I saw it, I was like, and whenever I show this, people can't really like, is it three D? Like, is it a real environment? You know. Like sometimes people yeah. ask me, like, if I don't tell them, they're like, wow, how many polygons do you have, you know? But it's just a flat painting. It doesn't need any polygons, but it's so immersive. And for example, then I started like, again, like I was trying to see how I actually can I make it in a sketchy way. And I did this environment. Uh, let me first show it to you in this program. It's very sketchy basically it's a sketch of it could be doom 4 or quake or whatever it is right but like i like the fact that i can tweak it so quickly like say let's say my art director comes in and says oh man can we make it a bit deeper i just erase this part and paint it again you know i don't need to rebuild everything render it make it like topology right make it low res and stuff like that because it's all painting i can tweak it really quickly but then I actually started playing with animation and that's what I did for this demo. You can see how crazy you can go in terms of like the way it looks. You see with all those like uh, lights yeah, the lighting spots, yeah. with the like and the way you do it, you basically paint light on a separate layer and switch it on and off. Simple animation. But it's really, really like giving so much life to this shot. And especially when the lens flare is picking up. And look at this. You can look down. And like, again, I was animating those lights just like and just uh, like shifting the frames. And then also you can do stuff like this. Look, when you move in the distance and actually can tell, gives you like an idea that this space is probably deep, you know? And you can do stuff like this endlessly. Like you can put like smokes coming out, just like animated textures and stuff like that. And 
especially like if you have like a gun in your hands and stuff, there's really, really, it's very difficult to tell if it's not a 3D environment. Of course, because when you orbit, you don't see much parallax. Like you can potentially see the parallax as well. For example, if you, for example, the way it works right now, there is a sphere and there's a texture on it. And, but you have mul you can have multiple spheres. And for example, I can cut out this window and offset the background. So when I rotate, I will see the difference between this foreground and the background. And it, it's really, really cool. And I, I maybe I'm a slow 3D artist, but I would say <laughs> doing this and as a flat painting takes way more less time than actually building this stuff. And you know, and you don't need game engine, you don't need anything, especially for like, you know, those types of games when you just look around and you need to pick something, you can do stuff like that so quickly, you know. And I can see some of my friends who picked up this technique, they were doing some stylized paintings, uh, and it just looks amazing, you know. And with a little bit of animation and two point, like if you put on top of it a little bit of sound and voiceover, this could actually potentially look very, very immersive and show you like 90% it will show you the the final look of whatever you would have if, even if you build the 3D because it's all relevant and it's all the perspective is right and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feeling the space, um, having the feeling for the space for the early game production is just priceless for those yeah, type of or, things. Or let's say you're doing a pitch work, right? You need to show yeah. like game concepts, uh, but you don't have a budget, but you have this talented guy who can do 360s you just hire the guy he does this beautiful like 360 paintings for you and you can art direct him like you can art direct the way it's going so it's not like because it's, there's so many different ways you can do it you can actually do it in a very efficient way and then having a very little budget you can actually relatively little budget you can actually like create those concepts for the pitch work that you're trying to do and stuff like that um, I, I want to show a little bit of like actually how it's happening. If probably guess not many people have seen the videos that I was uh, uh, you know, there. It's basically like I'm using 3D code. You can do the same thing in Photoshop, but I just like 3D code because it's a 3D program, and there's so many cools that I love about this program. And actually, that's why. Remember when I said like I really whenever I tried 3D, I always felt like oh man, <laughs> like you know, do something that it it looks a bit more like friendly and there's so many things about 3d code that i love like for example you can like simple thing like just changing your brush size without t touching the keyboard is priceless you know because i just want to spend time painting rather than clicking my keyboard which i do occasionally but i just love the the way they actually build this program so and then you basically start painting for example like you can do something very sketchy uh, and then when i press alt i can actually rotate in this space and there is this grid uh, so actually, yeah, I can I can start like blocking out the scene, you know. So for example, let's say I'm doing some kind of corridor environment where I have these guys walking. You know, I can rotate. And then one of the other things that I I really love, and I when whenever I go for to Photoshop after three D cut, I was like ah. I wish I had it. When I press Control, I don't need to press erasing. Like I, I just press Control and it subtracts the color. It's very, very useful. Mm -hmm. so in Photoshop, every time you need to press E to kind of perform the erasing bit. So, so yeah, you can see like for example, I can have this guy and then I have the guy closer to me. And obviously, like first thing I did when I started doing 360, I went to back to to school in terms of perspective. <laughs> I had to study perspective once again because, you know, there's, there's a lot of for foreshortening here going on. So you need to really know how to kind of, kind of make it happen. You, you told me also about that you were uh, having the live drawing classes with the model, right? Mm -hmm. so you, yeah, still well, are, you still are participating those or? Uh, we, we had it for a while in the studio, but then the, obviously something happened. I don't remember why we stopped doing that, but I definitely encourage doing that first it's very refreshing it's kind of you step out and you just do it but funny thing that i was like my latest day, um, sessions i was doing stuff in 3d i was actually paint like sculpting in 3d code because i felt like this is something like i love traditional artwork i i would love to like every day or whenever i have time i'm trying to improve my traditional and like life drawing skills but you know when you go to work and you actually do a lot of 3d it mm -hmm. kind of makes sense to I'm trying to combine those two things, you know. I'm trying to um, 
train the muscle that I'm actually using at work at the specific yeah. uh, time, you know? So that's why I was doing some uh, like life drawing, sculpting type of things. And uh, like I said, like 3D code has some amazing things like symmetry, which is like really, really cool thing because uh, it, it, it enables you to do stuff in the symmetry, you know? For example, if we... Yeah. So you don't need to waste time of, you know, like yeah, you don't drawing need, it. Yeah. You don't need to actually waste time to kind of flipping it around. You can do characters or you can do environments and stuff like that. Let's let's say like we're gonna do like a gate type of thing. And then you can have like you can just switch it off whenever you want and you can have like a dude coming out of the door, you know. And then slowly you start getting this story. Uh, I wanted to quickly like skip this actually like painting process, just show you a couple of okay. <clears throat> so yeah, for example, this is the sketch I was doing. And you see. Nice. And then you can look around. And basically once you like block out the main shapes it's all about rendering you just go and spend time and actually make it look more real you know but the the principle is there you know yeah so, absolutely and i love the fact that you can create layers there's so many things in 3d code that just makes sense it looks very similar to uh what do you call it uh to photoshop just layers and everything else but also there are some really cool tools that i felt i i, I felt like some of the brushes they 3d code has you don't have a equivalent of those in free in, in photoshop because like for example this brush it looks like a like you're painting with a like a wet brush you know with some some yeah a little bit of water color on it it's, it's very very interesting so we totally switch to sketching in 3d code these days i, I do yeah if i do 360 i prefer to do it in uh, inside uh, 3d code like I said, the symmetry, I don't think, you, you know, like, I'm pretty sure every character artist, before they go to bed, they pray, they pray to God to give them symmetry tool in Photoshop. But <laughs> un unfortunately, Photoshop guy, uh, God is always ignoring them. So I don't, I don't think symmetry is coming to Photoshop in the very close future. So uh, that's why I kind of prefer using pretty cool. So I believe that because someone is asking, how would you showcase a character or creature in this? I think it's it would be just similar, right? Just painting in the character, you can just switch off or switch on uh, to your need uh, symmetry and, yep. do a f and, and do a full character design in it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if I want to do a character with a symmetry tool, I will just go and activate the symmetry and, oops, hold on. To create a new layer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for like for you, you just need to hide the grid, and then you can just like start. The yeah, characters. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very simple. But you know, like the funny thing, like for characters, in the recent time, I for some reason I, I started preferring VR stuff, and we will come there, and you will see the point because. Like you can, you can do like a silhouette two D drawing, but then if you do that in three D, then straight away you see the volumes, you see the, and because it's so simpler than just even even simpler than sculpting, I would say because when you start sculpting, it needs to be very well sculpted to be presentable. But in VR, you can like turn off all the lighting and make it like a like a tune shading, and you can actually paint and sculpt like a crazy mixture of that. Mm -hmm. which is really, really, really interesting and very powerful, I would say. And once you do those, like you can export them, you can, like I do in Marmoset, I, I did this environment and I painted it and then, and then I went to back to Photoshop, like I touched some, like put some, worked up some places that I wanted, but then you can obviously see, you can animate it and do some really, really interesting things. And I strongly advise you if you have friends or if you ever end up buying Oculus, once you see those paintings in vr then you go like oh now it makes sense <laughs> you know because the scale like of some of the like i did a few paintings with the planet and you look at the planet it's so big you know it's just like 
it's really really interesting to see like the whole thing working like when you look up at the, the the actual scale of the planet is so well presented even though it's not stereo image so it's not exactly 3d it's still it is still very convincing i would say yeah it looks also very mysterious as well <laughs> for for this specific shot i guess yep cool yeah. and i did like a like a few workshops and one of the workshops i did was at, at dice like they're very good friends of mine and they just awesome artists and they picked it up so quickly like the stuff some of the stuff they've done was really really nice oh yeah i saw those yeah we were, we were working on this together and basically we made this one scene but from this one scene different artists had a different take on it like this artist was saying like oh maybe we're low to do uh, very close to the water and the other artist was saying oh how about like if we, if the guy had a gopro and he was killed he was just almost like he you see he just had this gopro in his his hands and he got killed you know so <laughs> interesting like if you, yeah. you can there's, there's no way you can convey this in just 2D painting, you know, and it makes me really excited. Like, and if you have time and a little bit of budget, you can make it amazing. Like, you can put like all those animated smokes coming out, everything in slow motion, divide them in layers. There's so many things you can do with it, and and it's very, very, very exciting time. Yeah, great stuff, man. It's, yep. uh... Uh, if you guys have time, like we unfortunately we have very little time comparing to what I want, really want to show you. But there's a lot of like videos that I put up on Facebook. You can just look, go and see like a, there's like a sped up process and you can actually see like how with, just with the line drawing, you can do like cockpits, like interiors and stuff like that. It's all very, very interesting. And hopefully like more and more artists will pick it up and actually uh, create. It's not like people keep asking me, oh man, is it going to replace? Like, oh, no, nothing is replacing nothing, right? Like, yeah. like Digital art never replaced traditional. It just was a very nice amendment of next kind of step into what people can do with it, you know? It's so another like, thing that you can use, right, for uh, for absolutely. the purposes. It's, it's another thing that you can use to express yourself as an artist, you know? Like some people do traditional and they are very good at what they're doing and stuff like that. Uh, so but there's nothing is replacing nothing and it's never late to learn. That's why we started my story when I was 28 or 27. Like some people are like, oh man, like I just learned how to draw. Do I need to learn 3D? Like if you feel like you need to, just go for it. You know, there's no one who can tell you you have to do it. You know, that's not true. It, it, in, in many, like uh, especially in the movies, you have, you need to know 3D, but it's not like you can do, be still be like a 2D artist and kick ass. But you need to be very, very smart about what you're learning and how you're doing things and especially in my case like you said because i started late i had to be very very smart about how i learned because my time was not limitless like i had family i had a lot of aspects i had to take care of like if i was 18 years old i would probably just go and try everything yeah absolutely you know what i mean so, yeah, yeah and that's why it's kind of like about first you need to understand what you need to do and then you kind of make a roadmap of what you need to learn and what or what you need to use to kind of solve that problem and stuff like that also kind of setting up your schedule for every day if you if you don't need to like go to office every day or you know you have you have some time actually for practicing stuff you can just you know take one or two hours every day whether it's like in the morning or evening but exactly if, well, if you keep sticking to that you will be beneficial you know it will be beneficial for you for sure exactly it's it's a long debate isn't it like some people say oh i don't need to go to uni like i can learn everything by absolutely myself. because everyone is different actually and yeah. you know you can, you can tell by you know even how people are picking up the the tools maybe yeah. some you know one will be you know getting to something faster and the other will find as you said you found try trying to you know match 2d and 3d in different ways and maybe you know starting with 3d and trying to learn how to build everything with the with the normal software yeah so um you know whatever actually works for you yes exactly and uh, you know like in ma many cases like yes you can ask someone but in many many cases if you just really sit down and think about it and analyze what's happening and how you need to solve it you can come up with the solution you know it's all about asking questions like and trying to find answers for them you know and especially these days it is it's way more simpler because when i was starting there was no one around and i was in tajikistan like like 
I, I made a joke about rhinos and elephants, but that's exactly where we are, you know, in terms of <laughs> artwork. Like, <laughs> no one, like, whenever I go back, people still think, like, I'm just doing this, like, boring, childish job, you know? Like, people think, okay. like, I need to start get serious about my life. But, and being there, like, it was super difficult to learn. But these days, you just go online, you have cheap tutorials, you can ask so many friends, this community is super friendly, you can start posting here and there, and then if you, like, do the right things, you can get wherever you want. But I do understand also it, it became super difficult because now there's so many great artwork out there, you know? So oh, yeah, the field is becoming so competitive nowadays. It's so that... competitive, but then... Once again, it's just like in music and whatever, in everything else. It's just know? expanding, right? And also the number of projects are increasing. So. Exactly. There's always jobs. The and, industry you know, is growing. Uh, so. There's always job for, for everybody. It's just all about us like doing the right things at the right time. And to do that, literally, you just sit down, you make like a list of things you are weak at or like you think... You need to do that, that to get somewhere, you know? And un unfortunately, like, I really spent so much time uh, thinking how can I, because I, I I do get a lot of requests with people with the different backgrounds and, like, they would ask me, like, oh, man, I'm doing this, that, that, but it's not happening, you know? Or I'm doing this, what what is wrong with me? And unfortunately, there's no single answer because apart from what people tell you there's so much stuff on the background you know you don't need know the family you don't need like the situation they own and just telling them like oh do this and you will be fine is not right you know <laughs> and i usually tend to say guys like there's so many things that you need to think about it and i kind of compare it to you know when you go to sound recording studio you you have they have those old big mixers right like with all those sliders to create that music and basically there's one operator who kind of makes the volume higher brings the bass down or like you know controlling the music levels and stuff like that same with our life you know like if you there's one slider which is called anatomy but that slider inside that slider there's a lot of different other oh, i wish there was something like this you know Jesus. and you really need to understand which slider you need to push up or turn down like and that what will make your music slash your art original and that would make other people want you to sing or to perform for them you know and I, if you just try to put all them all them all on the highest uh, uh, volume on the highest level it just will sound gibberish you know that's why you need to be very careful about how you control your kind of things that you're doing and it doesn't really matter what you do it could be art or anything else you you really need to be smart about what you do, what they're trying to achieve, you know. All right, so that's some great, great advice. I, we can tell that you are flying constantly and giving workshops all over the place, right? Um, so, what's your plan for the for this year? Are you still going to do some workshops? Oh, in Europe? I think I would say I'm done. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because all my right. wife told me, like, okay, listen, when was the last, <laughs> when was the last time we had the uh, vacation she's right i did too much i will do a couple of workshops uh and it will be more like weekend ones and there's one more but then yeah i i i just think like uh right now i need to spend a bit more time and, and that's one of the i again i went to my mixer and i put my workshops workshop slider up high and my wife was like no no it's too loud you know take it down, <laughs> get it down. so and then i had to pull my wife's slider a bit upper so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very simple. It's the best visual representation that I could come up with, and I'm gratefully I came up with that now I can use it. It's 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 very very tricky. You know, there's so many aspects, and that's why usually whenever I do teaching, I try to avoid people telling people like, "Hey, do this, you will be fine." And then five days day later, the guy commits suicide, and just because I told him to do that, you know, it's very difficult. There's so many. Put the like, life slider down. Yeah, like characters of people the way they do surround like i love doing workshops because i think like the background i came from is very different from what like some people that are that surround me right now uh had for example i had this harsh ex-soviet like uh relatively poor like life you know like and i had to like 
learn everything and achieve everything by doing certain things. That's why whenever I go to countries like from ex-Soviet Union, because I speak Russia, I do understand them. I'm so happy that I actually I can share my story and probably inspire them as well, you know? And that's probably the biggest reason why I'm doing those workshops. It's it, sometimes it gets so difficult to me, like like numeric, numerous times, I had to actually fly like on a Friday evening and start workshop on Monday, uh, Saturday morning, sleeping in the in the airport on the couch, and it was like, oh my god! But then you see people's reaction when you actually deliver something very useful, and you kind of think, oh yeah, it was worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. So probably next year I will pick it up, but for now I'm kind of chilling down. And also I I want to concentrate on actually teaching because I was promising so much to kind of. But, you know, like some people, when you post something really cool, they were like, oh, I want Gumroad. Like Gumroad is not that easy. You know, there's two hours, but you need to think it, about it, organize it. Because, Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it, it needs to be efficient. It's not about money making. I truly believe it's about like delivering those things that people would find useful, you know. Yeah. yeah, it has to have structure. It has to be, Yeah. you know, it doesn't have to, it, it can't be just like you scribbling and doing your thing without explanation like yeah. i bought a lot of gummer tutorials and i can tell that yours are you know you get everything you need in there to sort of Thank apply you. it to your own thing yeah. uh, without um the, the, like your agenda coming in and sort of forcing the artist to follow it you are giving the tools you know so that's great you're giving the tools and advice not the f like the trick, you know, yeah. which is great because I, I, I've i seen a lot of tutorials that are giving away the trick, you know, so you suddenly become the artist you're teaching, yeah. you're learning from, which is yeah. sort of not the thing I'm looking for in those. So it's yeah. really cool to see that approach in there too. Well, well, once again, you kind of proved the fact that, remember when I said in engineering, it was all about fundamentals and then I can give you the, give you the basics thing, basic things and using those basic things, you can actually construct something bigger and more interesting and that would be very personal to you and like i when i was trying like getting into my teaching career i always try to avoid like over promising you know like get this tutorial will you will be, will be amazing as me you know it's like one of those <laughs> softwares like i love this software what is it called like vue or something when you see showcases online you would think man when i get that program I will create amazing <laughs> landscapes, you know? Yes, oh, yeah. And yeah, you get the program, you run right It's a like, what, what It is looks this? like shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? And you go like, what is this? And it crashes. After that, it, it crashes. crashes all the time. And nothing is said like about that, but it would just... Yeah, it's a you. French it's software. Yeah. It's amazing. No, it's nothing. I have nothing against French or any other software. It's oh, just, of course. It's I mean, this is... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, it's just pure. You know, I, can, I can say it's a Polish software. It would mean my, much more, right? We'll it's probably like, don't even start. Yeah, just pure logic. Like, like, when you when you open the software, you expect yourself doing something and enjoying it. But when you open it and you kind of like wow, and you don't know what to do. Anyway, that's we could do it another time. It it probably will take us another five hours talking about that. But I, I actually wanted to graduate, uh, go into VR. And that's where the fun starts because uh, remember when I was saying that I always felt like 3D is great, but there's so many limitations, you know, like first, like the tools are not that intuitive because they're built for something else. And when you start doing, you actually think like, man, this is so simple to do. Like, let's say you created a surface and you need to cut the hole. You think it's easy, but it's not. <laughs> you know, like if you're doing sub div modeling, you need to do like all this crazy voodoo magic, or like then you use booleans and do. And it's just like for me, it always felt like, man, this is not the way I. I'm not enjoying it. You know, I can do that. Like I can sit and create an amazing 3D model, but it's just not fun. You know, and I I like the stuff that that gives you a little bit of fun because that's why you you learn faster. And when I tried VR for the first time, and especially when I got my controllers and I actually started drawing and painting, I was like, man, that this is it. This is the stuff I want to do. And I actually you use the same principle in 3D code. Whenever I use 3D code, I never model anything like in like in terms of like modeling. You know, you make a cube and you start extruding or you make a surface. 
I try to paint in 3D software. Like for example, if I'm in 3D code and if I go to modeling tools, uh, the way I do it, and there's like a whole course that I did that's a shameless advertising here, but you can like basically buy and see how I'm working. But you see like I'm painting with geometry. It's a bit slow because we're running the the stream right now. So when I started using VR, that's actually the same principle that I was doing. Like I did uh, the car and I did this example, which is probably better to show. Yeah, th th this video somehow like uh, shows you the process. So it's very 2D like, you know, like do the first rough sketch uh, very sim simple just to understand the basic form and proportions and because it's a 3d environment you can actually see the proportions and how big the space is is amazing and then basically once you've done with this one like uh, i started like cleaning it up just as you would do in 2d and then you refine the surfaces and stuff like that so the final result it's a 2d artwork like if i go to my uh, art station page so these are two the artworks that I was able to extract from one VR painting. And this could be easily used on films, on games, on whatever, because this is how you show your idea. Oh, I've got this vehicle, look at this. And you're showing this different thumbnails, you're showing like the same. Imagine if you were doing this in 2D, you had to redraw every step. And if you if you were doing in 3D, it would take so much time to get to this kind of level of detail because and I will show a few things. VR, because it's painted, it actually gives you more than fully finished, like, subdiv or, like, precise modeling, you know, because a lot of these, like, small imperfections, they give you a very nice indication of form. So this, like, lifelike, um, you know, like, age, aged metal and stuff like that. But then, obviously, you can show it and preview it in 3D. It looks like a line drawing, but then when you click on it, it takes you to the sketch fab. And in a sketch fab, you can actually like, you see, I can rotate, I can zoom in and I can basically view this artwork. And it's still like from any angle, it looks like a line drawing, but it's actually not, it's a 3D model. And then from there, like my next step was, and you know, it's a funny thing. Whenever, whenever you do something, people start questioning you. People are like, oh yeah, it's cool for rough stuff, but it's useless for like high end concept. I was like, okay, like, let's do it. And then I did this, <laughs> I just took those and I tried to make like, what if, how far can I push this? Like, can I really get a really nice models, like a really nice renderings out of it? And I did this series, which kind of proved me that you can use those models and create some really cool stuff. Like, and actually because they were like, almost like hand painted, they were like, you know, like this surface, it was, if it was done in 3D, it would probably be straight, you know? But because it was hand drawn, it was a bit wobbly, just exactly like real objects are, right? Uh, so that's why it, it didn't take me long to actually get those images to here, because I had to just put the textures on, erase some of the lines and stuff like that. And when you squint your eyes, they look pretty photoreal to me. So, and then probably the next step, once you do this, people would say, oh, it's good for like dirty vehicles and stuff like that. What about like? precise modeling okay we will do that one i'm working on that so it's coming don't worry about it <laughs> you're gonna prove them wrong again no it's not about i never wanted to prove anyone wrong i it's <laughs> just course. like it's just one of those things and i, I read a book, a book about it and it's basically saying uh people don't like to be disturbed from equilibrium you know like people like, like for example if you do something like let's say pick up a simple example you have a person who is a heavy drinker like he drinks every day and just one day he stops drinking you know what would be the first question people will ask him hey man what happened you know like did something happen <laughs> you know because people just are so used that he is drinking every day and yeah. not because they want something bad for him but they just they surprised that he quit drinking maybe he just decided not to do it you know so the same thing with art when you're trying something new so many times people told me man why are you doing this and then a year later they buy your camera which is amazing so satisfying you know i can see emails on my purchase thing and i can say oh that guy buy bought my camera awesome <laughs> <laughs> so a... but, but truly like i never want to prove anyone wrong i just I want to prove myself that I can do it. It's, you know, that thing that I mentioned in the beginning, when you have this theory that like, oh man, in theory, if I do this, this, that, that's going to happen. 
and then you actually when you put this in practice and the, it it actually happen it it would happen exactly as you thought about it it's really satisfying it's just like oh man yeah and trust me it's not easy like i spent so much time doing like examples before i did this one they they were unsuccessful i was like i don't know it's good, it's not good enough and i just kept going you know because i knew that at some point i will get it done you know and for example just recently i did this one it's it's it started as a part of my workshop i did in zagreb and uh, we had this guy rodrigo who made this concept just the 2d artwork i was like oh yeah let's do this church and we started doing it together and then i worked it up um and it just proved me like there's so many things you can do like on these renderings actually there's not much like light going on like a lot of textures they're just emissive textures and they just emit light so this is something i was always against in 3d why does it take so long to render something it doesn't matter you can get the best machine on earth but it will still be slow because then you will be rendering way more polys and doing all that stuff so i was like man i can paint a lot of things i can just drop these textures on something and then get out of it I will do like a breakup on the series and it will make more sense. But these days I tend not to even like render stuff. I just not not properly set up lighting. I just drop like this emissive textures everywhere and they do the job as it would be. And opposed to proper rendering, it takes so less time. And it's just like really cool to see how it's all coming together if you think how to solve this problem. Okay, but we let's go to back to this uh, VR stuff that I've been doing. Uh, you can also go on my Sketchfab, and there's like a, a few other paintings, like VR paintings and stuff like that. And I like them because, like I said, you're doing like a 2D artwork, but then it's being converted into 3D space, and like there's so many interesting things that you convey just by doing that. So I think it's time to switch to our VR world, right, Derek? I think. Yeah. Let's let go, me just, man. Let me just swap the. Where was that? Uh, hangout. Because I need to put my headset on. Was it this one? Okay. Awesome. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So we are now in VR. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna put my headset on, so I'm, I will not be seeing anything. So if something goes wrong, just tell me about it. Sure. Oh man, VR world is amazing. Just go there, nobody knows where you are. <laughs> so, okay, let me just run the program really quickly. So you are using Oculus Medium, right? Uh, yes, as a first demo, I will show you Oculus Medium, but ideally I want to show you a few more because there's, there's mm -hmm. way more. Okay. And for some reason, nothing is working. As usually. Okay. Let's just shut it down. Okay, awesome. Almost there, guys. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Okay. So, uh, so this is Oculus Medium. And it's pretty much 3D code. I wouldn't say ZBrush because ZBrush is not voxel modeling, but it's basic sculpting software, which is kind of using same principles that 3D code does. And it's basically like what I was saying about it is that the fact that you use your both hands, which is amazing, for example, and it doesn't restrain you. There's no way in 3D you can do surface like this, right? Like spirals and stuff like that. 
which makes it very, very unique because like the way you do stuff, like for example, you can do either using your right hand or like, for example, you, you start generating surface and you use this one. You see what I mean? Like you can mm -hmm. use your both hands and you can create this really amazing geometries that would be really difficult to create and yeah, um, more complex ones. Yeah, exactly. And it's more intuitive basically because you see there are so many button buttons, especially when we jump uh, to the last software that I want to show you, you will see how this using these different buttons, you can create this amazing combinations of things, you know, like, and there's no menus. You don't need to click anything. You just like go and just sketch and paint, you know? So okay. all the buttons are set up um, in advance or you can also just change them. Uh, for now, we, they set up, but I think like this is very first version of this program, but mm -hmm. then they will make it m more advanced and stuff like that. So obviously the first thing you would try is the symmetry thing, you know, because uh, with the symmetry, uh, you can do symmetrical things, obviously. And it's very, very handy. What I love about it, remember I was saying, uh, I was telling you about the scale, that's where there's nothing can compete with with Oculus because with uh, VR because oh guys there, there's this sound I want to switch it off because I don't hear you application sound off okay awesome okay awesome so what's happening right now uh, like I can sculpt like let's say let's do something very simple like we can do a seat right like when you use it normal 3d that's that, that's what you would do like and don't don't bother about like the level of finish you can do it very finish i'm just in the sake of uh, this demo yeah Probably let's do this. And you can change the brush size. And, and you can change the brush size. You can do all the beautiful stuff that you want. But let's say, let's have you have a seat, but then you can resize it to the scale. It works much better when I do workshops because people can see me sitting on top of it. <laughs> it's so awesome. Like for example, <laughs> now I put it into position where I sit and like I can look around. Okay. Oh, it's a bit too big, right? <laughs> I don't see my legs, but I see my arms. So if I put my arms on my legs, that's where they are. And then from here, I know exactly how big this thing is. And then from here, I can start designing the spaceship. You know, I can start putting like different things, you know, different controllers. Okay, now I can put my hands over here so I can yeah. reach. So it, it, for doing like props and stuff like that, this is amazing because it gives you not only 3D uh, aspect, of it but it also gives you so much in terms of uh how big this space is and for example if i can sit here can like for example you do some something like here then you know you can't reach it you know you can't press those buttons imagine if you had your like safety belts on it needs to be closer so if i had my safety belts on probably my displays they should go over here you know mm -hmm. so this is so cool it's like designing real worlds but like it's like designing but then not thinking about heavy 3d stuff topology and all the very More boring stuff. oriented yeah like you can start putting like buttons over here like boom boom and any at any point you can increase the resolution like like you can click this one and then you would have more information like you can start putting like you can boom boom and it's not laggy right on your uh, no, no. The stream is a little bit, so I'm just uh, wondering. No, no. Like I think it's just the stream. Yeah, it's, yeah. Of course, it's not. It's not that like in my computer. And look, you can work from a real point of view, but also you can go to a model kit point of view and start doing like it. It would. It's. It was like a model kit, you know. So now it's like a, designing this thing, like a thumbnail. You know, you just do like the basic shapes and stuff like that. And then I can go back into my model and like, let's say I want to do like some panels over here. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I reach them when I'm creating a real thing, you know, boom, boom. And then for example, what you can do, uh, you can uh, switch, let's create a new layer. 
And for this new layer, we will go emissive and then we will change the color. Uh, we will, let's pick up some blue color, right? And then for example, I can do some panels over here. What about the translucency of the materials? Can you also... Um, not, not yet. They have very primitive materials set up right now, but trust me, give it another few years, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, give, you, give it another couple of years, you will have whatever you have in Maya or like in Cinema 4D, you will have it in here, you know? And for example, let's say I want to do like this uh, glowing head. head yeah, pack, yeah. Like you can do it over here, blah, blah, blah. So, and then look, I can look around. Wow, it's really cool. The sense of scale and I can go, go back, like for example, uh, uh, so go back to my layer. Oops, change the color to back. <clears throat> and there are a few things to will help, uh, help you to make a more precise stuff. It's like line tool. So for example, if I want to do, oh, you can cut things as well? In uh, yeah, if I press Control, I can cut within you see? Mm -hmm. Like a double click and it, it gives you me, it gives me the cut tool. Uh, hold on, let's just go to default gray. Oh, that, that wasn't default gray. So what do you think about the state of VR as it is for now? Because it's already, <clears throat> I think one full year, um, yeah. like um, user uh, mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. available for users. So, mm -hmm. um, and we cannot really see any major, I, I mean, game wise, not yeah. any uh, major studios being involved in creating AA games for it. It sort of feels like it's going to be a niche, not a. What about Resident Evil? That's pretty AAA, right? No, no. There, there's a lot of studios working in it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not into games. I can't tell you, but I can tell you in movies they started using a lot of things because it's just pure logic. Remember, like in many cases that I was uh, trying to share with you, it's just you think about it, and if it makes sense, it's gonna happen. Like for example, in terms of sculpting, like I know you asked about games, but I'm, I'm actually right now uh, like uh, giving you an example from our art community. There's so many cool things you can do with this technology right now, you know, and it's all, it's all really about people picking it up and start doing it, you know, because there's so much sense in doing that. Like, for example, for prototyping real things, you know, like I can go back and you can see I can actually like started refining this thing and I know how big this place and that's that's something you would never get in 2D sketch. And this is something you can never get in 3D. It's like a combination of those things, but on top of it, it's giving, it's giving you a, a scale factor, which is amazing. So I don't see why it shouldn't become a mainstream. The, I think the debatable question, what format it will be, like people saying AR possibly, but mm -hmm. definitely like virtual or augmented reality yeah, it's, I'm not denying it's a thing. It's yeah. a thing for sure, especially for us artists. I'm yeah. just, con I was just talking more about the game industry since we haven't really seen a title that is like no, no, you know, a do. Halo on Xbox or they do anything. They doing they're testing it out. Well, you know, there's a, a very big factor of uh, uh, getting sick uh, when you're using this one. They're yeah. trying to resolve yeah, yeah. The, all those technical things. Yeah, but that, that's gonna happen. Plus, you know, it's everything it's it's all about money you know it's not easy to develop something so i would say even normal games they they take like at least few few years to develop so I, i'm hoping that's that's gonna become uh it's just a matter of time you know you think also about uh just um animating things in it because uh, uh someone asked like what if you know there uh, is i will show you, i will yeah. show you something it will blow your mind i just recently got this um uh, uh, beta testing like animation software for VR. It's amazing. Like one of the things I wanted to show you, like I, I whoever tried posing characters in 3D, including Daz and all that stuff, it's just so boring, right? Because like, it's just not intuitive. You, you drag those rotation pins and shit like that. But in VR, you can actually hold with one of your hands a model and then re like reposition. I will show you, so it will make much more sense. Let's just quickly do something, and I will I, just because I want to jump to another software. 
like for example, let's say we we did like this helicopter type of thing, you know, um, and then yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, it's um, because people are still posting the questions, so maybe uh, I think some of them are uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, what if you work for an hour uh, using VR? Like, what about the, you know, how do you feel about you know, your arms and is it like tiring or how not do you feel about it? No, not at all. It's, you know, it's just like with anything else, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't feel tired. It's, it gets a bit hot. Like, for example, right now it's quite hot in here in London, which sounds terrible. Uh, and interesting <laughs> but yeah it's it gets a bit like well, because you are having like this helmet on top of you but i mean remember first phones you know like yeah you know, yeah they were, they were like a brick in your in your pocket but it eventually got better but we so. are getting back to that again <laughs> exactly <laughs> like it, a bigger it, phones and <laughs> it, it, it becomes more and more trendy right yeah like so I don't think that's going to be the big issue. All those technical things, so there's a lot of smart people who can figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, just Let's just like kind of quickly finalize this thing. I don't want to spend much time, but let's say we've got something like this, but then I can go inside and look what's happening right now. I'm inside with the proper scale, but then I can look. I can look around like this. Wow, those wings are at least like five meters span, you know? It's mm -hmm. crazy. But then also what I can do, I can go and actually, like, for example, merge these guys. Okay, boom, boom. I think I will lose in my materials, but it doesn't matter. They still don't have groups for some reason. I, hopefully they will do it at some point. Oh, come on, blah, blah, blah. That's me showing. Okay. Going to crash. I think because I increased the resolution a few times. So basically I can the multiply those guys and I can be like looking around, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I knew what happened. Well, some technical things like it's, there is a square, but it doesn't really matter. So what we can now do, like I can, I can grab this one and I can duplicate this guy. Oh, which will take another time. That's the problem with, with the voxel modeling because it's a like very heavy geometry. Yeah. It, 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 uh, that's why like the, the other programs that I want to show you, they are more like low poly, poly polygon uh, modeling. They, they they are much better. Okay. And and you see oh, come on. Yeah, now I can grab this one and I can like let's do a formation of these guys, right? Put one over here, boom. And now being in this one, like I can get inside and I can look, wow, that's pretty cool. So basically I can cr start creating this whole scene, you know, like whole world, like of different vehicles. But what is really exciting that I I hope, and there's it's a logical thing to do, at some point they will make a multiplayer mode when you can have several people working on the same environment. Like let's say you have you can have prop guys, you can have environment guys, they will be working in the same VR environment mm -hmm. and all doing separate things. Like I can be doing like let's say even on the on, on this thing, like I can be just designing this this cockpit separate and then there will be another guy who I will not be seeing and he will probably be from Singapore or from somewhere else. And he will be actually designing the overall concept and we will be working on the same environment. And you can have an art director who will be dropping notes out like, hey, can, hey man, can you make this bigger and stuff like that? That's going to be really awesome because it's very logical. And already I think on Quill, they did a test with that and it kind of worked with way we had several people working on the same piece. It's amazing, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, that sounds super exciting. exciting. Yeah. And all the retardants that will come with your coworkers just being in VR. I mean, Put, putting and, dicks in your cockpit. <laughs> yeah, and then imagine because, like you can work from a different country and be still, and you know, because of all these visa issues and stuff, but I just getting get scarier and scarier. Oh, yeah, that's that's for sure. Yeah. All right, let's jump into something else. First, I need to find this button. Okay, cool. Okay. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm. I'm okay. just. Uh, 
I'm just waiting for this thing. Dark checking if it didn't crash. Yeah, okay, no, no, it's all good. I was just quiet for a second. Okay, I, I will show you Quill. Unfortunately, I have a 4K monitor, so it wouldn't be full screen. But you will be still able to see some stuff. Oh. So Quill has that feature of like the infinite zoom thing, right? Yes. Uh, how yes. is it possible? Is it voxel based too? So it or uh, no? It's just I think it's real lower res geometry. Okay. Uh, because so voxel is like a proper geo, like you, you know, if you cut voxel, there's geo inside. Yeah, it's like a cloud, right? It's like like a clay, like a proper clay. But uh, okay, hold on, Oculus just crashed. It's just sometimes it happens. Let's do it again. Yeah, but uh, and Quill is using just a surface modeling thing when there's nothing inside, so that's why it's. it's so you see, it's not. Uh, let me just pull it to the center. Like this. Okay, you can see it, right? Yeah. Awesome. So it, this is basically like a painting so software, which I, which I love. Like if you, if you're doing two D artwork, you will, this will look so familiar to you. So for example, let me open. <laughs> I did like a couple of funny examples. For example, you see, I did this example. Like I have this armory here. But look how cool it is. I can grab this sword. And I can do this. I can do this. I can test it out, basically. Or, for example, I can resize it, and it will become a knife. See? Or, like, I have a gun over here. I can grab this gun. And, yeah, I can look. Like, you know, if I was doing a first-person shooter, it's amazing how you can just paint these primitive silhouettes, and then you can look just like navigate them as they were in the real world. Like, let's do another one. Like, let's go create a new layer over here. Okay. Okay. So, and basically, change the brush. Let's say I want like a pistol, right? I can just draw the pistol. And then, hold on. What the hell? Oh, did I just do it? Oh, it's on separate layer. So yeah, I can grab it like this, you see? Mm -hmm. It's amazing, isn't it? Like you can have your assets all over here. Like if you're designing something and you can put them in the same room, like if, for example, if you're doing a game, you can literally have this armory and then you can like your client which you, your art director will come in and almost try them as in real world you know you can stretch them you're not seeing me that's why it's a bit weird but when you actually see me doing like i stretch my arm and i have this gun in my hand this is awesome it's just so cool let me show you another example yeah what i also noticed with my time with uh, vr is that um Let's say you see that screenshot from a VR game, and it looks like World of Warcraft 2004, 2006, you know, graphics. But when you're actually in there, it feels so real, even though it can be stylized, it can be low res. Yes. It feels real because you're there, and it's a whole different thing. That's why I understand what you're saying now about, like, we're seeing only scribbles as a gun, and maybe it's it feels detached a little bit from what you are feeling, which is yes, holding exactly. an actual object, right? Exactly. And then you, you can work it up. You can make it like look like a very good sketch, you know. And then ability to actually grab it with your hands and kind of use it is amazing. So then another thing, like uh, let's say let's open this guy, like for example, super amazing for creatures. Like I, I did this guy over here. You see. And it's just, it looks like a, just a drawing from a distance, but it's actually a 3D model. And because it's an infinite canvas, like for example, I can zoom in and for example, I can actually zoom in and let's create a new layer. Okay. 
and I can work it up, you know, I can start like working it up, doing like small details like this, you know, putting more teeth and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I can start working like inside the mouth and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's amazing. And like I said, there's no way, there's no reason why it shouldn't be doing few people. You can have, like, I have a, I had a chance to design a few creatures for movies. And they would then late, later on build like by proper uh, creature uh, workshops, uh, cr creature effects workshops. And when I saw them working the way they do it, they they work like multiple sculptors. They work on a simple on on the same model, and then they kind of keep sculpting different things. It's amazing. So I I don't see the reason why this shouldn't be happening in 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 what we do in like three D world or in painting and stuff like that. So yeah, you can keep keep going. And in terms of storytelling, you can zoom in and let's say there was a guy over here like jumping, right? <laughs> nice. What about the textures? Uh, can you apply any of them or? Well, not in this one because this is, you see, there's no shading. It's it's actually a 3D, a 3D geometry, but it, it is a flat 3D geometry. Mm -hmm. So there's no texture, but I, I, I see I see it coming, you know, like give it another, like someone will develop a, a new software which will have all those beautiful things. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. But also like for gestures, oh man, this this program is amazing. Uh, VR in general, you know, like also like in terms of your uh, workspace, like you see here, I have like my references. Like I, I can pull all those references. So I have a 360 space around me to put to like, to put around myself like for references it's amazing isn't it especially yeah. if you if you want to hide that you use reference you put it behind you and never tell anyone okay <laughs> so and here like i i, I watched logan and i was like man this is was this was so kick ass so i did this little scene you know like a storytelling like this guy he's he cut she cuts her, his arm and then she kicks this guy and then you keep moving and you see this silhouette like uh, and she's got this uh thing so it's amazing. I mean, it's not finished in any way, but it's just like very, very intuitive the way you put the gesture, you know, because you know exactly like, let's say you want to do a sitting guy, right? Yeah, people are also asking what what have you used to study your perspective when you felt that you, you need to, you know. Oh, I, I, I bought uh, uh, Marcus's book, you know, Marcus, I, I, I don't know how to spell his surname. Unfortunately, he's amazed. The, the, the same guy who did Framed Ink. Yeah, okay. The great yeah, the book is called Framed Perspective, I think. Uh, yes, it's, it's an amazing book. I wouldn't say it comes I, into I bought the book, but I wouldn't say I was studying it like like properly i just flipped through it but in terms what i meant by studying i had to do like a lot of experiments to get where i wanted to get you know because like perspective but that book is definitely very good there's some really really nice things yeah so you see like if i want to do like a character and think a sitting character i do this very very quickly it's it's all about like very similar process to doing like 2d artwork first you, you knock down silhouette right you, you do those things The, the 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 only difference is this that this silhouette is in 3d space you know and i like the fact that every brush like you can delete it afterwards so it's not like Control z it's actually like uh, Control z is uh, doing undo but uh then you can actually go and pick every individual stroke and delete it that's how that's why it doesn't really matter what you did in in the first preliminary sketch because I can like if something is not is not working, I can like go and delete it and do it again. You know, it's very very useful, very very handy. Uh, guys, how much time do we have? Uh, we don't really have a time restriction. We usually try to stay uh, down uh, two hours, but actually it's uh, our guests' preference rather than ours. So yeah. Okay, we're, so we are happy to show stuff out for as long as you have time. Awesome. Just you know, I, I hate long tutorials. Pe people always fall <laughs> asleep, so we need to be very careful about that. No, 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 man, it's super exciting to see that.
I have a question, and how would you compare those two platforms together um, as it is for now? If, let's say, somebody would like to start their journey with VR, um, artists, like, you know, in the art direction, mm -hmm. not necessarily just for games, which would be the one to pick for you? Oh, man, that's one of those questions you need to be very careful about, isn't it? Like, it's like, do you support Trump or not, you know? Like, <laughs> how do you think those, how do you think those uh, two no, no, I'm just questions kidding. are so heavy? I'm just kidding. It's, yeah. uh, uh, I would say, objective point of view. I tried Vive, I, I tried VR as well, uh, uh, Rift as well. Uh, uh, controllers for Rift are much better. Like, they mm -hmm. feel so natural, like the buttons, the way they fit in your hand. And just super awesome. And this is very objective observation. I'm not getting paid. I wish I was by Oculus, but uh, and the way it sits on your head, like maybe I tried the wrong uh, HTC, but it just didn't feel right. It was a bit too heavy in terms. No, of no, no, you're right. Yeah, I have Vive, and it's sort of when you look down on your chest, it sort of falls. I know they introduced a new strap just uh, yeah. last week, I think, with a. Um, yeah. Um, with the he with the headphones uh, yeah. in it, so I think it's fixed. But you know, it doesn't come in uh, straight out of the box. So yeah. you know. No, I would say Oculus, but don't listen to me. You can buy, you have budget, buy, <laughs> try both of them. But yeah. But can you actually use uh, the, those two pieces of software you showed on both? Or yeah, yeah, you can. There is a revive for HTC, which enables you to okay. use Oculus programs, but yeah, I, I tried it just a couple of times, so I can't tell you exactly. So is there, a, like, uh, any problem with button mapping or how the controllers uh, I, I heard about it, uh, so, but this is just something I heard. I, I can't tell you exactly. All right. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, so you would go with me to, with uh, Oculus, right? Yes. Go for it. Okay. Now, I wanted, like, there's a couple of more examples, like silhouettes and stuff like that, but I wanted to show you another one that I recently, and I never published anyway, anything related to that one, but I felt like, oh my God, this is awesome. I mean, Coil and Medium, they are both amazing programs, but then the one that I want to show you is called Gravity Sketch, and it's more like a NURBS modeler. Hold on, let me, I will detach my reef for a second. So. Yeah, I heard about this one, but I didn't try it. It's what really is that one about? It's really, really good. So hopefully it's going to launch. And... OK. So cool. Do you, you guys see it, right? So let yes, me just, yes. Let me just hide this one. Yeah, oh, we here. can see it full screen. All good. So I think this software is very, very promising because finally they started utilizing the VR space, you know? Like you realized it's not a critique, even though it's a, it is a critique, like in both in Oculus, uh, in, in Quill and in Medium, the menus, they are flat. Like you have to press things. It's like old school, you know? This actually is super cool. For example, the way they did color wheel, I think it's amazing. Like, look, for example, you can start, it's the same thing. You can draw and stuff like this, but then you, you want to paint with a different color, right? And then you press on this button. Uh, which one was that? Oh, uh, OK. You see, there is a color wheel. But then to change the brightness, you need to push in. How cool is this, you know? So mm -hmm. you, don't need to, you don't need any other sliders. So, you know, you, you pick the color you want and you move in it it shows you the darker version of it amazing isn't it like and in vr in, like i know you're looking at the flat screen right now but in vr it makes so much sense you know and then once you pick like let's say i want like yellowish dark greenish color and i pick it and my color is that color it's amazing uh so let's just delete this guys the second amazing thing uh it's the the tools they have. Oh man, it's just so cool. Like for example, surface tool, which 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 is like a NURP surface tool, you know? Look at this. The way you create the surface, you hold two of these and there is a line in between. So when you drag the surface, you start creating surface. 
Mm, that's interesting. And this is amazing because look, let's swap the color to something like neutral like this. Let's say yeah, you want to and you can actually export this OBG, right? As well. Yeah. Let's say you want to do a cape. Job done. <laughs> yeah. How cool is this? And then obviously there is a mode when you can uh, use like a point, so you can be very specific, very, very, very precise. And mm -hmm. I will show you how it actually works. Because let's say, of course, it's coming with all those beautiful things like symmetry and stuff like that. For example, you can go to mirror mode. So I've got my symmetry over here. And then let's pick up this brush. And then let's do like that, oh, that car-like sketch that we did before, right? Uh, just uh, activate the pressure. Oh. Create some generic car, right? Okay, and now, uh, God damn it. So let's say I want to do a surface between them. Oh man, how cool is this? Look, you go to the surface, and because I see these points, like I can go and I click, tuk, 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 tuk. job done, you know? Like if I want the surface through here, then. then. They should hire for just sound effects alone. <laughs> Man, they oh, awesome. I mean, no, this is, yeah, I was wondering how would you actually do a flat surface on in exactly, the, in the exactly, medium? Exactly. And it looks like you were kind of doing it all manually, right? In medium. Yes, exactly. In medium, it takes so yeah. much time to, because it's vox mm -hmm. voxels are usually very blobby and stuff like that. So you, you need to do, look, this is the surface, right? Obviously, you mm -hmm. can change the surface at any point if you want. Like, let's say uh, I want to tweak this guy over here, right? So I go, and then I there are points, you see? And I so can, you can move them and stretch. I can, oh, yeah. I, can, I can move them and stuff like that. There's also snapping. Like, you can exactly snap. It's a bit technical. I don't want to show you. Or maybe if we have time, I will. You can snap to the line drawing, which is also amazing. So, but basically, you can be very, very precise. Uh, look at the this guy over here, Lata tool. This is where they started utilizing the VR space. You see this axis? You can actually move it. How cool it is! Like, look, if I want to bring it over here, so I, I then I will check if it's ah, that's all right, and then I can do boom. Boom, the tires are ready. Obviously, you can move them afterwards if you want. Like, I can grab, like, every individual uh, geometry that you create, you, you can grab it afterwards. What would happen there? Oh, my axis was off. Anyway, you can trust me. If you have a right hands, not like mine, you can do it properly. So, so are they, uh, the all the objects that you are just adding, are they, are they kept in like a list or like a layers? Or? No, there's no list at the moment. But I thought it's amazing because usually when I have those outliners, like it just don't get so messy. You can pick anything you want. You, But trust me, this is so intuitive. I will show you another example. Let, let's just create a new one. Uh, <laughs> let's just, oops. Uh, hold on. Let's just switch off the mirror. Okay. Look, if I, for example, okay. Why I think it's super cool because that, look at this. There is like a library of prefabs over here. And I basically dropped in a few things here. I love the way they did this menu. Look, there's no list. There's no crap like that. There is list here, but then look, when I, Click on this, it brings me a car, and it, what it tells me, grab the car. So you, <laughs> you grab the car from here, and now look. Man, this is, this is going to be mind-blowing. Look, boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. You can create stuff like this. How cool it is. Like if you, We will do it again, but I want to show you something. Like you can take this car, 
And you see, the, I have this thing saying break. So you click this, and now my model is broken. Look, I can quickly destroy this car. I can, like, let's say if this car was abandoned or something, you know? Like, I can have, look, I grab this wheel, and I can do this. Nice. Yeah, that's great. I can paint with geometry. This is something I always wanted. I don't want to model anything or do like boring stuff like that. I know like there is a seat here. You can grab that seat. Let's say if this was like a graveyard or something. You can take this car, boom, boom, like place another one over there. Oh, it's too and much. then you can export it, right? And render. And then you can and... export it. Yeah. Yes. And then you can export it. But no, but we are not done, man. Hold on. So let's say let's do this graveyard, right? Like, mm -hmm. Boom. Um, you know, like one of those I heard in, in America. <laughs> <laughs> and then look, uh, the way you, you can uh, resize your brush, like if you want to select multiple objects, you see like you can select them all and then boom, boom, boom. So basically I can create this whole environment in five seconds. But I wanted to show you something. Uh, A lot of bones. Like do some tires over here. Okay. Okay, let's then just create. And now look. Once again, I can go full size. Like if this was real world uh, uh, scale, right? Also, you can. Hold on. See, you can activate the light as well. Why is it not casting shadows? God damn it! Yesterday it was casting shadows. Okay. Yeah, it never works on stream, man. Anything you do, <laughs> it's broken on stream. But this okay. looks great. This looks like such an intuitive tool to... It's very, very intuitive. But look... Uh, it doesn't feel like work. We had to it's like fun. So, hold on. And now... Uh, look, we can, obviously, there are some few other tools. This tool is amazing, man. I remember when I was, like, at some period of time, I was very into lasso painting, you know, like when you paint with the lasso. Look at this. Mm -hmm. You can have this guy. Okay. And then let's activate next one. Look at this guy. So it's like a oh crap. Okay, it's like a flat guy, you see? But then obviously you can grab him and then you can have this guy boom, 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 boom. You see you're painting with those guys. How cool is that? So you can actually like establish a scene so quickly, like I will show you uh like let's just delete these guys. But then, for example, with that tool, basically what you can do, you can do like a flat planes and stuff like that. But there's also like primitives, which are amazing because look, you can create a primitive, right? But then you go you go into this mode where you can actually do this, you see? So cool. I can do a plane. So let's do a plane. How is the um, the sense of depth with this? Do you ever feel like you're working on the wrong plane or too far or too close to the camera? Well, it depends on how this this thing is far away from your camera, really. You know, like mm -hmm. right now I'm very close, like but the scale is wrong because it's too small. Like for example, it's like we're doing thumbnails, right? First you want to get like the overall design, but then you actually want to zoom in. Like for example, this is oh these guys disappeared. Never mind. We can just delete them. You can scale them anyway, right? Later, right? Yeah, yeah. You like, for example, all I need to do is to grab them. I can move them and scale them. Mm. So, so yeah, that's a, this is a good size. Oh man, it's too big. Yeah. Let's delete them for now because I want to show you something else. Let's just like remove these guys over here. Okay, so basically, I can. Okay, good. And this, you see, there's like a number. It shows you actually how big it is, stuff like that. But then uh, you can do the same with the characters. That's mind blowing. I know I keep telling it to anything I'm showing, but it's really, really impressive. So 
I got my stormtrooper, right? It says grab my stormtrooper. Oh, so I've got my stormtrooper, right? Oh, that's what I was thinking about reposing. But I can grab him, break him. And at first it seems like, oh man, he's completely like detached. But because you're using two hands, you can repose him so quickly. Uh, let's just delete this plane so you see it better. Like, for example, I can go like this. It's like having a mannequin, like a real mannequin, you know? You can repose them so quickly. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's actually incredible. Yeah. So it's like if you had like a real mannequin, then you would... What was this? There's a plane somewhere. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. oh there's a cube somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Lost cube. Yeah, for, for example, let, let's make something funny. Uh, let's just go and bring this uh, brief up again. Break him. And again, you can select him as a whole thing as well, right? Let's, let's do a little bit of... <laughs> let's do a little bit of break dancing with this guy. The one that you did in Taiwan. <laughs> that, that, that's the one I was doing in Taiwan. <laughs> I mean, reposing something like this, and even in Daz, and it just always looks very stiff, you know. Like, but here you can actually go very, very, uh, because you're basically seeing it in a three D space, and it's all like playing with dolls, you know. Like, I never played with dolls, but I can probably imagine, like, if you had a mannequin, like you know, one of those mannequins for painting when you use them, it's very, very intuitive. Look, and then you can take this one. I can boom and I can drag him over and <laughs> best Star Wars art ever. <laughs> uh you would win in uh, the ILM contest. Definitely. Yeah, the art station one. Uh, like you, you start thinking in terms of animation, like if he was doing like air flare or something like that. Yeah, the, the, the fact that you are actually not touching any sliders, any sort of yeah, yeah. artificial the... controller. Uh, I mean, you're touching directly the touch controller. But what I mean is, software-wise, you're not. Exactly. Yeah. Be because there is, I, I mean, there is no physical way you can do it in 3D in one go. Because look, I can hold this, rotate, place, and scale as well. You know, this is amazing. Hold on, let's just complete this air flare. So then I can go and select this guy. Boom. And I can go boom. And then from here I can do this. Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, and then when you look at them, like, and you see, it's almost like you're creating this animation. So cool, isn't it? And for example, if you want to do a crowd of those guys, look, you just, uh, let's grab this guy again. I, I never tested what's the limit, but I suppose there, there should be some kind of limit. Oops. Till it crashes. Till it crashes, yeah. But then you can grab, for example, this guy, and then you can go boom, 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 boom. boom. You can place them. It's like they're watching the battle, right? Oh, no, let's do it properly. 
So there, there are two rebels and these guys that battling against each other. <laughs> From the last, Je- the last Jedi. It's like proper battling. Look at this. Awesome. <laughs> and, and then we can probably bring in some, some rebels, right? I don't have a rebel, but I think I have a generic man. Prefab generic man. So you have this generic man over here. It's too big. Anyway, you can do all that stuff. In, but you see, like, as a set design, you can do stuff so quick. And you can bring these models, like, let's say you want to do buildings. You can bring in one building and boom, 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 quickly. And obviously, at any point you want, you can, for example, you can start designing these things, like, because you can select any of those tools. And, like, let's say you want to give him a gun or, like, a something. You know, mm-hmm. you can change the geometry that's ready as well, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And then once you like, let, let's say, like, let, let's do it properly. Like, for example, that's what I was saying about um, what do you call it? Mm. Uh, m- multiplayer mode. Let's say you had another guy in the same environment. He is a prop designer, right? So he was designing a gun for this Star Wars versus Rebels battle, right? Mm-hmm. So I will do it very quickly, but you will get the point. Cool. So we've got this gun, and then he designed it, and you just bring it in, and you say, oh, man, thank you very much. Cheers, man. And then you give it. You can start, like, for example, let's rotate. Because it's a brush, you can, like, so you let's, did let's give it this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. This guy, you see, and now they all have guns that someone else just designed next to me. <laughs> yeah. So, did you try to import like a little bit more complex uh, models as well? To or if, or at this point, you think it's it's more like you know sketch oriented and? Well, it depends on what you mean. More complex. I mean, this car was pretty complex. Like yeah. If you ask low poly or like I, as I told you, like I don't really care how high detailed model is I can paint over but mm-hmm. it's just the way how it intuitively you create the scenery in VR is amazing you know yeah. there's so many cool things uh, look like for example let's say you had these guys like over here that's what I was saying like let's say you, you can keep designing things like I can select this Boom, cape done, you know, I can do this, 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 this. So they all have capes. I mean, you can definitely do like three or four different capes. So you can have a costume designer working with you and you and he can have or she can have like a shelf. Yeah. Like, like that's why I showed that armory because like you can have different designers working on different things and then you just go and grab from there you know you grab stuff they did like in real world you know like in set you would go and grab someone else's prop here you do the same but this is all cheap there's no money spent on this stuff you know which is very cool yeah this is awesome thank you so much for showing all of this um, even though I had a hat set for a few months now, I didn't even run Medium, which is a shame. Um, so I will make sure to actually, I think, I'll get um, Oculus uh, just to see what's the difference and to explore those new worlds. I can't wait to see actually how people, how you know, p- different artists will take those tools and apply their own yeah. styles with it and just like be themselves within. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, it's it's gonna be awesome. I'm really enjoying it, you know. It, but on a logical level, there is a lot of potential. Like no one can deny. Like there's so many cool things you can do in 3D. Like yes, there are downsides of it uh, of VR. Uh, like it's a bit expensive. The gears are not that high resolution. But just and again, it's pure logic. Look, ten years before, if you remember first smartphone, it was terrible. But now it's all awesome and great. So, I mean, 
it's definitely worth exploring because there's so many ways it can open for you as an artist, especially like I know a lot of 3D, 2D artists who are struggling in 3D because it's a, it's a different thing, you know, it's like, and sometimes it's not that artistic as you want it to be, but VR actually kind of, I think, manages to bring that fun back again. Oh, yeah, it's just like playing with things in the real world and uh, it just brings that authenticity of the experience into the creative process, which is something new, definitely. Awesome. Something new. All right, man. Thanks a lot for joining today. Do you have anything else do you want to show or? No, I think I'm done. If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer those. And I mean, if if not now, guys watching this afterwards, maybe like you can message me, shoot me a message on the Facebook and we can take it from there. That's awesome. awesome. That was actually a really, really good session. I hope the next one will not be in three years. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, guys, if you want to see what we've done before with JAMA, it's a session 40. So yes. it's actually 40 sessions before that one. So go on our channel and check it out. Um, check out JAMA's his Facebook profile. We'll be linking that uh, in the Facebook event and under this video. So go check all this stuff out. And that's a Absolutely. great learning opportunity. And so such an inspiration to see your work on my newsfeed. Every time it's just something new, something different. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. man. It's really like, I, uh, first I want to say thank to you guys. Because, thanks to you guys because you've been doing it for three years. And I know it's not easy. It's a lot of effort and stuff like that and keep it going. And I keep seeing like what's the, the group, what's happening in Level Up. like. It's a lot of learning in there, a lot of sharing, which is a good news, you know, and it's, yeah. it's very, and that's how somehow connects to like this. When I post something new, it's always like intimidating. You don't know like what people will react, to, but it's so good to see the community support. It kind of helps you to keep going and stuff like that. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, very... it's hard to manage though. You know, it's over 100,000 people in the group right now, which can get quite messy if not managed. So thank, thanks to all of the, admins, volunteers that are helping us to keep this group together to filter spam that is getting there on the daily basis. And thanks to all the users that are actually coming in with uh, valuable feedback. And uh, our guests are also posting from time to time in there to show you guys the latest of their work. And they're also sharing tutorials in there. So make sure to find our group on Facebook, just called Level Up, if you guys want to show and get your uh, feedback in there, that would be great. So thanks a lot, Jama. Thanks awesome. a lot again for- Awesome. Thank you very much, awesome. guys. And yeah, see you soon. Absolutely, yeah. man. Thank you very much. Cool. Th thanks, and, Derek. Uh, thanks, for thank and Jonas. Thank you. Derek, do we have any news? Uh, um, actually, any updates? Actually, I, um, I'm uh, talking to one guy um, that's, uh, that might be our uh, next guest. That's great. Uh, maybe in two weeks. Um, so we're gonna. I, I'm probably gonna um, get uh, info and update on, like if he's gonna do that uh, soon, and we can post the info like within a couple of days. Uh, because yeah, I, I have I have one person in mind too. Well. So okay. I think that that can be quicker. So maybe yeah. next week even uh, we yeah, can absolutely. try something out, depending on our schedule, of course. So again, thank you all for joining today. Uh, if you enjoy what we are doing, please please like a video, subscribe to the channel, spread and the word if you enjoy. We are so thankful for you guys watching us. And Absolutely. Uh, we, are, we are never done because people <laughs> think that yeah. we, we are done already, but we said like, a, man, fuck this. We, we need to do that. It's like we, we felt like we need to revive that and we're going to keep getting stronger once again. So yeah, so, uh, yeah we, we will keep on doing that. So. Uh, Thanks, uh, thanks for supporting us. Thanks a lot, guys. Awesome. See you next week. Hopefully, See not next not week. not in the next three years. Next week, <laughs> cross <laughs> your fingers and uh, yeah. absolutely. See, See you, guys. Bye bye. See you. Bye. Peace. Thank you.